guys, we're back. Um, episode two. Um, like I said, we are at incredible.pm, so I'll probably say that every episode in case, you know, someone comes in at, they want to know, so I'll just give it, just go to incredible.pm, and it should take you here. So, we did the first session, now we are on the second one. So, first session, we basically worked with ANDs, and some induction, and some inductive, uh, parentheses based propositions so we pr proved an associativity property here but we only really had the combination logic rule of and to work with but we have an arrow here so what does arrow usually mean it usually means implies and implies kind of works with ands actually because if you know that if if you know that a implies b that also means if you have negations you could say at least in propositional calculus you could say that not b implies let's see not b and or let's see not b or a so no it combines or no ors and nots so if you know b is not true then that means a can't be true basically is what it usually is the usual is a classic assumption so anyway Let's get on with this. So let's think of an analogy of what this could be saying. So this is basically saying uh, A could be like, well, on your planet, if all car uh, A means that all cars are made of metal. Um, and let's see, B could mean... Um, Magneto can destroy all cars on the planet. So, if we know that, so we're going to assume that all cars on the planet are made of metal, and we're going to assume that if all cars are made out, out of metal on the planet, then it follows that Magneto can destroy all cars. And then we're going to use those two facts to then prove that Magneto can then destroy all cars on the planet. I don't know, I'm just thinking of some kind of way to explain what this could mean in you know an applied form that's that's the beauty of uh logic systems is you can apply it however you want as long as your math does its thing and then your applied principles are just assumed that the math applies to it then you can apply it really however you want you just have to always know in the back of your mind that that's just an assumption it's not an absolute application that's how math works. And uh, anyway, I'm not here to like control how people think or what they believe, but that's it actually gives you more freedom and it allows your math to be very pure. And that's how it works. Um, it's something that I kind of learned after after I did my proof classes. And I noticed that acad in academia, you know, you learn all these things like arithmetic, then calculus and all this stuff, but like you don't really do proofs. And until someone actually, like, does their major in math, they don't end up, you know, they don't actually, like, prove a lot of things. And so they don't really get the hang of what it really means to do formal proofs. So, they're not a boring thing. They're actually a really cool thing. And it relates to computer science a lot. And it's also how math uh, theorems come about. It's how we figure out things like calculus and things like that in the first place. So, anyway, A... And A implies B. We have a couple of these new logic blocks. So we already had these first two. Now we have these two. When I first saw these, when I, a long time ago when I first played this, I was like, what is going on? I don't understand. I am confused. Okay. But if you look at this, this one is the one that we need here. So this one's simple. But this one, we'll get to this one later. But this one at the top, obviously, is pretty simple. If you if you put an implies at the top, like A implies B, and then you put the thing that matches the first one on the bottom, which here it's saying X has to be the first one. So we have A, which is the first, you know, you have A implies B. So this letter here has to, whatever goes in here, whether it's a letter or an expression, it has to match the thing before the arrow. 
okay? So this basically just breaks apart your implies, and then of course it results in a B. So obviously that's really trivial. Let's go on the second one. Okay, so this is chaining. Uh, I don't know if that's really like a mathematical term, chaining, but we basically are, you know, making a chain of imply statements here. So we're breaking apart the idea that if you have A and you have A implies B, um, let's see here, right, then you get B, right? Okay, and then we have B implies C and then we have B, right? So we can break that apart. So let's put the implies up here. And that gets us C. You get it? You get the what's going I could bring this thing back here and then you can kind of see how that you get what I'm saying? How that works. We kind of start with these three things. And then we also kind of our logic system gives us the ability to break these apart. And when we when we combine these two ideas together, we basically get B. And we combine the idea of B and B implies C together, we basically get C. That's really all that's it's saying. So let's chain even more. Apparently, uh, let's see. A implies B and C. B implies D. C implies D. Okay, so I think we can skip here because if you just take a c d we don't need these two i think so this gives us a choice so we could do this two different ways and that the point is is that there's two different ways to prove d here it's d is true for basically two different reasons and all we need is one reason we don't need two so that's all that this is doing, I guess. So we're going to take A implies C and A, combine them together, and we're going to get C. We're going to combine that together with C implies D, and that gets us D. You guys get what's going on? So we didn't need these two, but we could have used these two instead of these two up here. This is going to get more complicated, and I will get stumped. I, I can almost guarantee down here somewhere. I forgot which one it was. I won't know. I won't know how to do it. There's one down here that I almost guarantee you that I won't know how to do. I don't remember which one it, where it was though. But it's I have it's so like the actual solution is super complex, and I don't even understand it. I don't think intuitively. I want to, but I don't. Okay, so this is obviously simple because we don't need A implies A to prove A with just A. So, yeah, there's no reason. Yeah. Okay, A implies. I thought we already did something like this. Oh no, we're pro we're not proving a single proposition letter now. Now we're proving an implies. So we're proving the statement that A implies C. So we don't even know if A or B or C is true. Like, if we try to apply this to a real-life situation, it could apply, but, like, our application could could say something like, we're just doing logic with functions now. So we could say that, like, you know, if a function is, is irrational, then, the, um, then, you know, you can't, you know... Let's see. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if it's irrational, then uh, you can't describe it with a finite number of digits or something like that. I don't know. So we don't know what the function is, but we're just generally speaking about the functions. So a could be a func could represent the statement of whether a function is irrational or not, whether that's true or false. But in this case, we don't have we don't have to talk about specific functions. We're just proving a general idea. So that's the beauty of this. Um, and here's a be here's a cool part of the proof too. So we're actually going to use this for the first time. And this is the this is the beauty thing. This is a beautiful thing because even though we're not starting off with 
a particular idea being true, we, we kind of generate one, like a fake one. So what this means right here, this actually gives us an assumption. So it basically generates this like, this magical mathematical concept, which is an internal assumption. It's kind of like what these are doing at the big, at the big picture, but this gives, this is an assumption within the, this block right here. So basically this thing, if you can prove it, given anything you already have combined with whatever comes out of this thing right here, you get what I'm saying? So whatever you have to prove something with, combined with this local assumption, it's a local assumption. So I can't use this A to like prove A is true somewhere else. I can only use this A to prove this thing right here. Um, that's how it works. So I want to prove, given A, that A implies C is true. And how do I do that? Well, I can assume A if I want, or I can already know that A is true. It doesn't matter, actually. It doesn't matter if I use this A or not. But I, I'm going to end up needing to know, I'm going to end up needing to assume that A is true because right here, all I have to do is prove that C follows. You get what I'm saying? So let's do this. So we know that A implies B is true. And then in, inside of here, we're going to assume that A is true. When we combine those two concepts together, what do we get? Well, we get that B is true. Okay. Well, we're not done yet because we're trying to prove C here. So now let's combine that concept with B implies C. And here we go. We got B implies C and we got B. So now we know that C is true. Let's combine those together and there you go. You have this proof. You guys understand how that works? So this block right here, what it's saying in kind of a, an English form is it's saying, well, if you can prove to me, given A, that C, then I will give you the result that A implies C. You guys get that? It's kind of simple, kind of straightforward, but I just want to make sure the concept's down because things are going to get more complicated. So, here we go. A implies C, and A implies the statement B implies C. Whew! And we need to construct an A implies C. So whenever we have an arrow here that we don't have already, that means we need to use one of these blocks because we need to construct it. And whenever we use one of these blocks, it's nice because it gives us something here. So, how do we prove C given A? Well, we know that we can get a C from an A somehow in here. We can't get a C out of this because there's no C in it, but we might need to use it here because there's a B. So, let's go ahead and combine these two together. Okay, we got B implies C. Okay, and then we can use A twice, remember? Whenever you assume something, you can use it as much as you need, not just once. So this doesn't get... Basically, I'm just connecting everything here. So I'm going to use this A twice. There we go, okay. So I'm basically just... It's like connect the dots. Just connect the blocks together. Um... Let me extend this a little bit, and boom, we got it. You guys see how that works there? So things are getting more complicated. You'll notice it's starting to look like a logical circuit. You get, you get what I'm saying? That's like a logic circuit. And there's a reason, There's in, we're not going to get into why, but it's okay to recognize that, I would say. Let's look at the next one. All right, so starting with nothing, 
Now, here's some philosophical, uh, you gotta think, you know, what are the philosophical implications of this? We're basically starting with nothing, and then we're gonna prove that A implies A. Well, wait a minute. How is that just true by itself? Well, we're not really starting with nothing, remember. We're starting, we're assuming our logic system, but we're just not assuming a proposition in the logic system in order to get a proposition. Okay, so basically our logic system is basically stating that anything implies itself. It's just like built in. So, how do we do that? Well, let's construct it. Okay, what do we need to prove A? Well, A. You get what I'm saying here? See how that works? This block can produce its own its own proposition without any assumptions. Is basically what happened there. So out of nothing, we've proved that A implies A. Okay? But we assumed that we can use this block, is what I'm saying. Okay, let's go to another uh, thing here. So A implies C, B implies C, uh, A and B are true. Cool. I want to zoom out a little bit and get some space because this is big. Let's split the and so that we have A and B individually because I think we're going to need that. Um... But we only need one of them, I think, because we're just implying C, so let's just use the B. We don't need the A. So we'll just get we'll just ignore that one. Say we didn't need it. Because we're cool. We're going above and beyond. And then bam. There we go. So we could have used this one instead of this one, but we needed at least one of these two in order to prove C from this. Okay. Phew. Okay, A implies C, B implies C. Now we need to prove that both A and B, if that's true, that implies C. Now, hold on a second. Think about this for a second. If you know that both of these are true, and that implies C, and that's all you're trying to prove. And you already know that, the, you know, all you need is A to be true, and then C will be true. Then here, it doesn't matter what B is. If A is true, C will be true, right? So, we already know that if both of these are true, all we need, a new, all we need is just one of these. It doesn't even matter if B is true doesn't matter if A is true, we could use the other one. So, yep, let's do it. Okay, so what are we trying to prove here? We have A and B, and we have C. See how, see how that works? A implies C. Okay, combine that, and that, and that. There we go, see? We didn't need this one. We didn't need it. I wish this thing would expand, you know. I would change the GUI a little bit here to make it more, a little easier to work with, but there you go. We didn't need this one, because this is less restrictive of a statement. Okay, so if we only assume B, then we can conclude that if A is true, then B is true. Well, that kind of makes sense, because regardless of what A is, we already know that B is true. So how do we do that? Well, what is it? Like, it sounds kind of silly, right? But if you think about that, all that means is that we, we don't, we're not using this. So we're basically proving this block without needing its assumption. Get what I'm doing there? We're just saying, well, we already know B is true, so B is true. Which is the only thing I needed to use, which the only thing I need to prove in order to say that A, anything implies B. 
I just need to somehow prove that B is true. Well, if I already, if it's given from the outer context that B is true, well, who cares if A is true? You don't even care. It doesn't matter. If A happens to be true, then guess what? That automatically follows that B is true. It's like saying, um, you know, if I w got out of bed this morning, then the sun exists. Well, that's true. If you got out of bed, then the, the sun exists. And even if you didn't get out of bed, then the sun still exists. But that we don't care about that. You know, we're, we only that that's how imply statements work. It doesn't say only if I get out of the bed, the sun exists. That that's actually the uh, different statement there. So can't get confused about what if means. If you're not used to programming computers, um, that's basically what what it means is that um, it's only talking about the case where the thing, the if thing is in fact uh, true. Hold on a second. I have to get a charger connected to my computer. I don't have to right now, but the battery is getting low. Let's finish up session two. Did I click on the right one? Yeah. Okay. So, we know that A and B are true. Or, we don't know that they're true, but we know that if they are true, then C is true. And we want to prove that, since that's true, that means that if A is true, then we know that if B is true, then C is true. So, Let's do this. Let me think about this for a second. I think I'm doing something wrong here. Yes, I was doing something wrong here. You might have seen those X's and been like, what is that? Trust me, it gets complicated. Those were meta variables. Those are basically standard variables for I don't know what goes here, so just label them as x1 and x2, whatever, just to show which ones have to be the same one. Okay, but here we do know what things have to be. So, we split it apart, and we have to prove that A implies, or B implies C, but we can only assume A to do that. Okay? Well, we, we know A now here, and we know that a and B together implies C. Um, and I think this, you could assume that there's parentheses around the, the A and B. So in order to show that, um, I'm using the term show as opposed to prove because here we're proving things, but I'm actually showing you in real life, like I'm proving to you in, in another context that just how this game is set up, how it works. Um, hold on a second, let me think. Right? Okay. So we don't know A... We don't know that A and B together are true. Okay. Right? But, see this B implies C? That we can break apart too. Let's make this bigger. You get what I'm saying? When, when you don't know what to do, or my strategy is, when I don't really know what I'm doing, I just break everything apart and try to just connect the dots. Here we have a B now. So now we got an A and a B, which we can connect up here. Right? Now 
we got C. Bam. So see how that works? It's kind of confusing, but um, inside of the assumption that we have an A, we assume another thing here, which is a B. And since we're using only using this to prove the thing that the only thing that we can uh, prove with this A's assumption, then we can use this as A's assumption in this proof here to prove this thing, because that's all this result is being used for. You get that? So I couldn't use the result of this to say just like, oh, B implies C. Right? I, c I can't use it. If there was a B implies C here, it wouldn't work because it's relying on this A right here. So the only thing that it can prove ultimately is this block right here. And if it if it's not proving that block, it, then it's not really useful. It's not doing anything because that's the only thing it can be used for. Anything if it's depending on this A. So this is getting more and more confusing. Uh, a implies that B implies C. We want to conclude that A and B combined together imply C. Okay. So here's where it gets it's more mechanical and less, for me at least, and less thinking about, you know, this in terms of real life things because it's just so complex that, like, why even try to come up with an analogy for what, you know, what this could mean, you might as well just connect the dots everywhere. Right? So A implies that B implies C. Well, how do we use this? I don't know. Let's maybe break it apart or something. Because there's no and in here, so to combine this thing with this thing, we either need to break apart the arrows or the ands or something. So let's do that. Let's break apart those, see what we get. All right, break apart that, see what we get. So what do we have here? We got A, B's, and C's up here. So this C looks like it could be this C. And this A and A and B, mm, I don't know, we could break this A and apart or something. Uh, looks like we can use this A to imply that and then this B to imply that there we go hey look we, we somehow I threw something together and there you go <laughs> it's, it's it's to the point uh, so I think you're starting to hopefully get the idea of why this gets really hard and mechanical because you end up getting to the point where it's just a big uh, hair hairball mess and you can't really keep track of it as easily Okay. Okay. Let's just break this apart. A implies B and A implies C. You know, I like this statement right here because it's strong. Because it's stating this and this independently. Right? So we have both of these things that we can assume. So that's really strong. So we already know the first part of this one. So if we, if we and those together... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. It's not saying A implies B, you know, as a, an expression, anded with C. If, there would have to be parentheses here. So this is actually saying A implies the statement, uh, the and of B and C. So if you want to explain it in English in an unambiguous way, you would, you would state the things before. You'd say, like, the sum of, the product of, or in this case, the and of the implies of get what I'm saying so this state this basically is the implies of a and the and of B and C when I put it that way there's no question about the order of operations prepend everything with its operator so A implies C implies B let's see how do we do this 
how do we do this? How do we do this? It sounds logical. It sounds like if we know that A implies B and A implies C, then A should imply both of them. But how is the question? Well, let's break that apart. Right? Let's make this bigger. All right, so what do we want to prove? We want to prove B and C. So if we independently prove B and C, then we can use this. Get what I'm saying here? And A, right? So now we can use these kind of independently of each other and then combine them there. So here we have an A here, and we combine the A here. And then we have the A and C. We got the A and B. And we got the B and the C proven. Whew. You guys get what I did there? So all this thing is doing is it's assuming that if A is true, can we use this other statement, these other two statements, A implies B and A implies C, combined with that to finally prove B and C? And the, the answer is yes. So, there you go. Okay, our last one for this episode. All right. Given A implies that A implies B, and given that A implies B implies A, wow, we can just assume that B is true. Huh. That is an interesting that is an interesting thing right there. I think that relies on like no, it doesn't rely on law of excluded middle. Wow. So what's a this is a philosophically interesting thing here because you have a statement like a solid proposition that, you know, represented by just a letter saying, you know, all humans are have hair is B, right? And so you could say that A is like all humans get haircuts or something. So this, I don't know, if assuming that if you know that all humans get haircuts, that means that if all humans get haircuts, then all humans have hair. But that's only true if all humans get haircuts, which we don't know from this. We just know that if it's true... Oh, yeah, so if it is true, then we can follow that all humans have hair. And in this case, we can say that if it's true that if all humans get haircuts, then humans get hair then we can it follows that all humans have get haircuts wait a minute hold on a second if it's true what if it's true that all humans get hair this is weird this is <laughs> i don't even know how to do i don't even know how to like express this in a way that even i don't get how So I know I know how I'd use a lot of this type of stuff in a computer in software development, but like in something I can't think of like something off the top of my head. This is just weird. What is this? If we assume A, what? Okay. Let me do something really quick. Let me do something really quick. So I'm going to end up breaking something apart to get this B. Right. 
and I don't know what that thing is, but it's going to prove B. But the point is, point is, uh -uh. I'm not sure. No, 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 this is weird. Let me see what happens if I connect this. This is to think about. Like, I just don't. So, what? I don't get how this one's possible to prove, because I don't know. I don't. I know it's possible because it's a level, but I just don't. I don't get it yet. Like, something about these it seems circular but then again I know it's not because it ha there's a reason why it's not circular because the, it has something to do with this a has being the same thing as this a allows this somehow you combine these and it makes sense and, and it works I'm not sure how though this is weird can you use this one here like I'm sure you could but then that means that what? Okay. Can but see this see? I don't think I can just take this one and connect it here. Yeah, see, it's circular. If I try to do it that way. So I can't do that one. Because it's circular, which makes sense. Hmm. So the way I have it set up here is we can't just assume that A implies B is a true statement. If we could, then we could prove B because obviously if A implies B, then we could assume A from this. And then from A, we can assume that A implies B. And then since we already have A, then we prove B. But obviously that's not going to work because we'd have to, we'd have to, it's circular. We'd have to have A implies B. So there's something else going on with those. Something else going on here. I don't know how we do it. Honestly. Honestly don't know how we would do that. It's kind of a weird thought. And th th I think this is going to be the first proof where I don't. This is going to be the first proof, the end, of, the end of episode two is going to be the first proof where I can't, like, come up with a kind of picture of what is going on here. This is just weird. I'm, obviously, obviously I don't remember this particular one. Let's see here. I don't know if I'd need a helper block. I know that eventually you kind of need to use these, or he these help like a lot. I forgot how you actually use them. I forgot how you use them. Um, yeah, I totally forgot how you use the helper block. I totally forgot how you use those. Oh, this is weird. This is just, this is weird. A implies that A implies B. A implies that A implies B. So if I change that to ands and ors, what I'm basically saying that if a true statement implies that because once you know a then you already know that a is true anyway so this in a way this is kind of saying that just a implies b if you think about it because the only time that a is going to be true or false is if the statement doesn't have an effect. 
So whenever this statement has an effect, which is, is when A is true, whenever it's able to actually prove something, well then we uh, uh, it follows that this A is going to be true anyway, semantically. Um, you can't, you know, so, and you can tell that only from the syntax because they're the same symbol here, but. <sighs> this should, you should be able to prove B just from, or you should be able to prove A implies B from this. And then because of that, you should be able to get A from this. And then because of this, you should be able to get B. You guys get what I'm saying? Like this proves something that we can use here, which proves something that we can again use here. Because this is this is actually a philosophically... Hold on a second, I'm thinking about this. This by itself... This by itself isn't... Hold on, does this imply A implies B? This by itself should become an A implies B. I don't know how, but it should. I think. Is that what I said? A implies B implies A. We should be able to get an A implies B out of this, which means we should be able to like assume an A. Oh, that's what it is. We need to construct an A implies B from this. We can't break this A implies B out of it. So this is where things get complicated because it, it can mislead you, basically. It can make you think, oh, this is how I'd get the A implies B out of it, but that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. You have to assume A. You guys are going to probably be confused by now. Uh, and then this implies that. And so we should get an A. Uh, oh, no, that's not good. We just proved the, the same thing again. How did I... How did I... No! No! I'm thinking for a second. So what if... Okay, maybe... Maybe I'm... We do have an A implies B here, which we can, we can prove instead of you instead of proving this. I wish we could just get a a simple A implies B out of this, but you know what? That might be possible, but it might not be possible with the logic blocks that we currently have. So it might make sense, but we might physically not be able to do it yet. Might be the case. So what I'm thinking is, let's just, let, here, let me try something. We can still get the effect of what I was saying. Right? So we have the assumption, and then we have the function here. So we can combine those. Right? And now we have A. Wait, we already had A. We already had A. What am I trying to do here? Why would why would A matter if we're assuming A to prove it? That doesn't that's not helpful at all. That that's let me hold hold on. Let me try some. Hold on. A implies B, right? And then we can combine that with A again. And we have B. 
but 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 what does that give us? <gasps> I did it. That's weird. Okay, so look at the logic that's required to 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 start with a implies a implies b and then result in a implies b. <laughs> okay. Let me um let me move the b like way over here so that we have more room. You guys see that? So just from this, and not even using this, we've gotten A implies B, which I knew, already knew that that made sense. And we can combine that, obviously, with um, with this one to get A now. But remember, we want ultimately we want B, which we which we have to use that. No, we don't. We use this again. Right? See what I'm saying here? So, even though I'm proving A, using the A implies B, I'm gonna... There we go. There we go. I did it. We 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 don't need this. We don't need this. I don't know how to erase these. We did it. Man, what? So, <laughs> so, so we proved that A implies B, and then we used that twice, because we used it to prove A, and then we used it again with that A to prove B. Yeah? What do you guys think? Episode 2. Here we go. Watch 7 billion humans if you haven't seen it. IPM it stands for Incredible Proof Machine. That's when I record episode 1. Thanks for watching. And, man, episode 3. <laughs> we'll just keep going. It keeps going. It gets more complicated.